Hello and welcome everybody to a new project from Geogra 66, Hour of the Truth, and an English reading. The book that I just received today by mail, it was announced to me already a fortnight ago that a German sister found this book on Amazon and did order it for me after I requested uh, sending me some books uh, when, she wanted to, uh, when she wanted to know how she could sustain my work. I said there are a lot of books that are very interesting and that I don't have the money to buy for. And she sent me the book Vietnam, Why Did We Go? The shocking story of the Catholic Church's role in starting the Vietnam War by Avro Manhattan. A book that she paid a little bit above a hundred euros, a hundred dollars for. And uh, when she looked at Amazon today after she bought it, what the price is today, the next edition or the next, uh, uh, the next book that you can buy there is um, about $250. So the price went up 150% immediately after purchasing this one book. And uh, that's very often the case when you hold these rare books, uh, which, which are rare today, in your hands and they are sold somewhere and they have other copies, the next copies will be sold much for much more money than the first one. So, I got the book right today on my desk and of course, as you know, that was just today, I did not have time to read um, any uh, preparational, uh, to do any preparations in, in the reading of this book. So I said, no, I'm going to take this right to the microphone, I think um, it will be uh, possible to read this book and understand this book and comment on this book even without any preparation. That's at least what I'm trying now. And this is why I'm taking it to the microphone right today. Now, this book starts of course with a cover and I just read to you what is uh, printed on the cover, the shocking story of the Catholic quote-unquote church's role in the starting of the Vietnam War. And it also has a back cover. And on the back cover there are also some interesting things written, but I think altogether it is interesting that we read another quote to start with. And that is a quote that comes from a Knight of Malta, another Knight of Malta by the way, because Avro Manhattan also was among other titles, a Knight of Malta. So that's something that you always have to wear in your mind, in the back of your mind when you read books like these, that these books are not written by Bible-believing Christians. That's why we have to measure everything against the Bible. That's why it is so important when you read books like this that you have the understanding that Daniel 70th week is completely fulfilled by Jesus Christ 2000 years ago, that the papacy is the Antichrist, and that Jesus is the Christ and the papacy is the Antichrist. And if you do not have that knowledge, when you do not have that understanding, you should better not touch these books because you will not, not get the information out of them that is necessary. If you are a Bible-believing Christian and you have the correct understanding of the fulfillment of Daniel 70th week by Jesus Christ 2000 years ago and the understanding that the papacy is the Antichrist, then you can read these books and then you can understand them much deeper even as the author meant them because the author always touches these books just from a temporal standpoint. He, Avro Manhattan, doesn't write from a uh, spiritual standpoint. It's the same with uh, Francis Rooney, who wrote The Global Vatican, uh, a book, in my opinion, that was formidably read and, uh, and explained by Tom Fress from Inquisition Update a few years ago. And you can find his complete reading of that book on my Vimeo channel and uh, probably somewhere else too. I don't even have it in my uh, mind for the moment if I uploaded it on BitChute or wherever else. Uh, anyway, uh, you can find that reading anywhere, you, uh, any, uh, on, on different places in the internet. You can uh, find the book as a PDF on Eric Baumann's archive.org for free. And of course you can get a copy uh, which costs you only about, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks or something like that. I have a copy of that book here in my home. I have the PDF on my computer. And also this Francis Rooney who was a uh, United States Ambassador to the Holy See, or the Vatican, the Antichrist, uh, between the years 2005 and 2008. He, of course, also was a uh, Knight of Malta. In his book, The Global Vatican, an inside look into the Catholic Church, world, world politics and the extraordinary relationship between the United States and the Holy See, which the t complete title of that book is, 
there is a little uh, quote that I want to read to you. There's actually a whole paragraph. I'm going to read the whole paragraph, but the first part, the first sentence of that paragraph is a very, very important quote to understand. That is from page Roman 16 in this prologue of the word, uh, of the book, and that reads, quote, Why is the power and influence of the Holy See underestimated? Part of the answer lies in the fact that it is an extraordinarily complex and unique institution and is therefore easier to dismiss than to understand." Unquote. Now that is exactly the problem that we have in the world we live in today. When people are confronted with complex and unique institutions, they just don't care to do any research, they just take over what they have heard here and there, what they have read here and there, but they never do their own research on that. And especially when it goes, uh, when it when it concerns a uh, an institution like the Roman Catholic Church that has been here for almost 2,000 years, because we know that uh, the iniquity uh, was already working, as Paul told us in Second Thessalonians 2 during the first century, and out of that iniquity that was already at work, time by time by time, developed the little horn until it came into full fruition in the 7th century, 606. And the Roman Catholic Church still is here, the Vatican still is here, and the Vatican still holds a stranglehold on uh, world politicians. The Bible tells us in Revelation, Revelation chapter 17, verse 2, the kings of the world have committed fornication with the whore of Babylon, and the people of the world have become drunk with the wine of her through the wine of her fornication. Huh? So, because the people have been drunk uh, with the wine of her fornication, they very seldom do their own research. They very seldom do investigations into things that are so complex and unique like the Roman Catholic Church. Therefore, many people do not even understand what the Roman Catholic Church role in today's politics or in the politics of the last few hundred years actually is. And when you try to tell them, they even dismiss it. Oh, that cannot be true. No, the Catholic Church doesn't have an army. Oh, the Pope is poor. The Pope has no power. The Pope is this. The Pope is that. Ah, uh, yeah, the Pope is the biblical, historical and prophetic antichrist, that's what he is. And they did not only write Sun Tzu's war techniques, the art of war by Sun Tzu, they also professed that and they also put that into action. So they appear weak when actually they are strong. That is their trick. They trick you all the time with subtleness and deceit, which are words that you find in an explanation when you look up the Jesuit order. Okay? So, in the Bible, it is written already in the beginning, in the beginning of chapter 3, it says, The serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. And we learn further on in the Bible that the serpent is the devil, the dragon, Satan. Satan meaning adversary. Adversary of God. We are here on earth bound in a war that is between God and Satan. And we all are fighting on one or the other side. The ones who are chosen by God fight on the side of God and the other ones chosen by Satan fight, fight on the side of Satan. That's the way it is. And in this temporal world, Satan has for the moment the upper hand. Because the people are gullible and don't want to do their own investigations, own readings, own research. They just want to take in what the media puts in their mind, what the school system is putting in their mind, the universities. Um, you know, I have been speaking about that voluminously and especially in my reading that I did together with uh, Brett Norman, uh, the code word Babylon, we spoke about that. 
And uh, if anybody has any doubt on who controls the media still today, you just have to read the papal encyclicals Miranda Prozos from 1958 and Inter Mirifica from 1963, where it is stated in paragraph uh, in, in Article One that it is the birthright of the Roman Catholic Church to use and own all media in the world. So anybody who works in media is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. And anybody who jumps out of that control is uh, either be silenced or done away with. That's the way it is. So why do we have books like these from Avro Manhattan? <laughs> because in the first place I told you this is a book that has 200, uh, 190 pages altogether. It has uh, a lot of uh, photographs and uh, uh, wonderful data. Um, it is very interesting to read, of course, that's the point. Um, but not many people are going actually through the effort of reading books like these. And because most people don't measure the things that are written in those books and that are happening in the world, because they don't measure that on the Bible, Many people don't even understand what it is all about. So why not l let them write these books? Not much harm can be done, can there? Oh, yeah, until a Bible-believing Christian gets a hold of these books and then measures what is written in here against the Bible and can tell you the real reasons of Vietnam, why did we go? So we are seeing if the hypothesis that uh, Avro Manhattan or the answer that uh, Roman Hatton comes to when he writes this book, Vietnam, Vietnam, why did we go, is the same that I come to when we have finished the book, which we are going to start in a moment. But the point is, let's go back to the little quote from Francis Rooney, the Global Vatican. Why is the power and influence of the Holy See underestimated? It is underestimated, it is not underrated, it is not even uh, less known, it is underestimated because people don't even do the effort of researching to see if their estimations are true. So that's why they underestimate the power of the Holy See. And the author continues to say, part of the answer lies in the fact that it is an extra extraordinary complex and unique institution and is therefore easier to dismiss than to understand. Of course, it is easier to turn to your television and watch another television series like The Walking Dead or uh, The Big Bang Theory or what I don't know what, what, what runs today on the television. I don't watch television. I couldn't tell you what's running on there, but you got on Netflix all the new movies and all the new series. You can watch all that stuff. And of course, a wonderful series that is so successful in the United States of America called Lucifer. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that is all easier. So then you can dismiss the question, why is the power and influence of the Holy See so powerful? Yeah, what is the real power and influence of the Holy See in the world today? You can just dismiss that because you turn to entertainment. Uh, that is much easier to do than really do research and try to understand the fact. Now the second part of the paragraph from Francis Rooney is, quote, a benevolent quasi-monarchy, uh, because the Pope is the Emperor of this Vatican state, he is king of that state, tucked into a corner of modern democracy, uh, because Rome, Vatican, that uh, little country of the Vatican, which is a nation all by itself, it is tucked into a little part of Rome, which is only the capital of the quote-unquote democratic state of Italy, that is what the author talks about here, the Holy See is at once a universally recognized sovereign, representing more than a seventh of the world's population, and the civil government of the smallest nation-state on earth. It has no military and only a negligible... <laughs> this word... negligible economy, so that is a, an economy you don't have to worry about, it is so small, yeah? The Vatican's fungible assets are worth about a billion dollars, a mere drop in the bucket compared to, say, the Harvard University's 27 billion endowment. But it has greater reach and influence than most nations. 
Now, if you want to, that was end quote. If you want to know more about the Global Vatican, then I can advise you to turn to the reading that Tom Fress did on that book. I do not advise you to read that book on your own. It is a very, very dangerous book if you do not know how to place Catholics within the world. If you do not know what the Catholic Church actually stands for. Tom Fress will make that point very, very clear in his, I think, 99, 100, 101 readings that he did on that book. Huh? I think it's 99 readings. It's, it's a very, very uh, intensive reading and discussion that Tom did with that book. And uh, it's uh, wonderful work to listen to. And I listened to it twice or even three times. I don't remember anymore. But it's, it's just incredible. Incredible. That book is incredible. And so is also the book of Vietnam, Why Did We Go? from Avro Manhattan. And now Francis Rooney wrote his book after 2008 because he was ambassador to the United, of the United States to the Holy See between 2005 and 2008, so he wrote that book afterwards. And Avro Manhattan's book, Vietnam, Why Did We Go?, is uh, what I hold here in my hand, copyrighted 1984, and this is the third printing I hold in my hand from 1987. So that's already more than 30 years ago, today in 2020. Okay, But therefore it is no less uh, contemporary, means it is absolutely up-to-date in the understanding of the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, some parameters have been changed in the last 30, day, 30 years. Uh, our technological, uh, technological um, uh, sources and, 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 uh, and um, apparatus and everything that are used today are not com uh, are nothing compared to 33 years ago or 33 years ago is nothing compared to what is being used today but the system is still the same it's about the system it's about laying open the system it's about laying open the system of the roman catholic church the synagogue of satan yeah because the papacy is the antichrist he is not the vicar of christ he is the vicar of antichrist he is the vicar of satan on this world yeah? And when you know that, and when you can biblically prove that, and you can biblically understand that, then it is really, really of your advantage to read books like the Global Vatican, or read them together with Tom Fress. Get a copy of that book, get Tom's reading, and uh, listen to that reading, hold the book next to it, and read along with Tom, and follow the discussion he puts on that, and do the same with the book Vietnam, Why Did We Go? Problem is, Vietnam, Why Did We Go? costs probably more than a hundred bucks. I can't help it. I don't make the price. Maybe there is another edition coming out. Maybe there's a new print coming out and the prices will uh, go down. I don't know. It's just the point that <sighs> the book is not available as far as I know as a PDF on the internet. And it is one thing to listen to somebody reading a book and it is another thing to listen to someone reading the book and at the same time following the same reading in your own copy in the time. When you have the possibility, I can only advise you to do that. You can easily do that with Global Vatican because the book is freely available on the internet as a PDF. You don't have to pay for it. I think you do not can do that with Vietnam. Why did we go? Then you have to invest the money to get the book or maybe someone else is going to scan it and put it up somewhere for free. I don't know. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to come into conflict with my archive.org um, where I hold my library with putting up books like this and I don't have a good scanner to do it anyway. So I'm not going to do it, but maybe there's somebody else doing it. The point is when you have the book in your hand or in front of your screen and you follow this reading with your own copy of the book along with it, many things are easier to understand because you can read the words for yourself you don't have to just hear them and understand them you can hear them and read them at the same time and then your understanding will well unproportionally grow <laughs> in comparison to when you just hear them okay so i will try not to read too fast i will try to get into the things that need to go uh, go uh, be gone into I will try to explain the things that are necessary and if you still have some questions there's always a commentary section beneath the video so that you can ask questions and if I am able to and if the questions are answer uh, worth answering
then I will take care of that I try to answer all your questions if you have any. Okay? Now, we are now leaving the Global Vatican for what it is. Uh, take that advice, advice from me with you that you take that book. But we are now turning to Vietnam. Why did we go from Knight of Malta, Avro, Manhattan? The back of the book says in the first place a quote that Avro Manhattan said about this book or about the Vietnamese war. And he says there, quote, the Catholic quote-unquote church, and that is very interesting that uh, the, the, uh, at least the publishers of this book, which is Chick Publications, uh, put the word church in um, parentheses, or no, not parentheses, but in uh, quotation marks. Uh, uh, quotation marks, the Catholic, quote, church, unquote, must be considered as a main promoter in the origin, escalation and prosecution of the Vietnamese conflict, unquote. Yeah? Because the Catholic Church is not a, quote, unquote, church. Uh, it's not what we Bible-believing Christians understand as a church. Anyway, the back cover of the book says the following. With an immense collection of facts, photos, names and dates, Manhattan proves that the Vietnam War began as a religious conflict. He shows how America was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression in Vietnam, supposedly to fight communism. Now, <laughs> this sentence alone holds so much information that I could easily go on for an hour or two in explaining it to you, but that would be maybe a little bit taking it too far. Let's just see what he says here. He shows how America was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression. Can you think of another um, case where the American public and the American military was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression? Maybe a little after the Vietnam War? A little bit more past time? Begin of 2000s? Do you remember that the United States of America was quote-unquote <laughs> attacked on 9-11 by 32 camel jockeys flying two planes into big towers and starting a war on terror, as uh, Mr. George W. Bush called it later, a crusade that is going to take a long time. Do you see the resemblance of what this author says already here, of what is said of the author already here on the back flip of the book, Vietnam, why did we go? And that you see history repeating itself? The Americans were lured into the war against terrorism now a little bit more than now about 20 years ago. We are having uh, today the 9th of September 2020, so two days before the 19th anniversary of 9-11, yeah, the 9th of September today, and the Americans still have been manipulated into war. And there's proof of that out, not only on the internet, but there's proof that are out everywhere. Everybody knows today that Saddam Hussein, the leader of Iraq at that time, had nothing to do with 9-11. It is officially recognized all over the world that Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. Okay, so they used another excuse. Oh, they said, nah, uh, but Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, and these weapons of mass destruction are very dangerous for the neighbors of Iraq, and we have to go in there and we have to take that weapons of mass destruction away. But there is video proof of the United States President George W. Bush standing on a pulpit uh, having a speech and saying, oh, we didn't find any weapons of mass destruction, or maybe the mass destructions are here, uh, weapons of mass destructions are here under the, under the pulpit that he's speaking from, and he looks down, no, no, they are not, and the people in the room start laughing. The people know that they are manipulated and still they are laughing with it. The people are led by their nose and still they are laughing with it. Avro Manhattan will show how America was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression in Vietnam supposedly to fight communism. 
Well, let me tell you. America was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression in Europe in the First World War, in the Second World War, in the Korean War, in the Vietnam War, and in all other wars America is in ever since. America has always been manipulated. The people have been manipulated by quote-unquote patriotism and to defend their country all over the world where there was never ever any danger to the country, where there was never ever danger to the democracy in the United States of America, which is not a democracy but a joke. And when you look deep into that, but that is not the subject of this reading, uh, you will find that out, that America is a presidential dictatorship, at least from the 1930s and Roosevelt's New Deal time on. But I'm not going into that right now. The Americans have been manipulated into doing what they are doing all over the world as well as other, st uh, other nations have been also. The nation states of NATO, all countries who participate in the NATO alliance, North Atlantic Treaty Organization as it is called, they are all manipulated into doing all that stuff. And the people who are with the United Nations are doing the same with their quote unquote blue helmets. Yeah? this military of the United Nations and they are also manipulated into doing what they are doing without ever telling them the true reason. What is the true reason? Well, this little sentence says it already. Avro Manhattan shows how America was manipulated into supporting Catholic oppression. It is always about Catholic oppression. If there is a government in this world, in, in, in a nation, that the Roman Catholic Church does not like, then the Roman Catholic Church calls for a regime change. And there have been many regime changes over the last, let's say, 60, 70 years after the ending of World War II. And they are still going on every day. So you really have to think about the sentence and then of course you say to yourself, well, yeah, but you know, <laughs> it is like Francis Rooney said, but the Vatican doesn't have an army. Huh? It is a benevolent quasi-monarchy tucked into a corner of a modern democracy. The Holy See is at once a universally recognized sovereign, but it doesn't have uh, it does have it does have no military and only a negligible economy. Yeah? That's what they tell you on the outside, but oh when you start looking to it at the inside and when you put the Bible against it you'll see that it is absolutely 180 degrees the opposite, the truth of what is written in these books. Yeah? The Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church do not need an own army when they control all the armies of the world. Eh? When you have control of the United States Army, of the United States military, why do you need an own military? When you control the Chinese military, you don't need an own military. You can use the Chinese for your efforts. And that's what's always been done. Anyway, Manhattan explains how religious pamphlets and radio broadcasts convinced nearly one million Catholics to leave North Vietnam to live under Catholic rule in the South, overwhelming the Buddhists that were living there. Manhattan explains how brutal persecution of Vietnamese Buddhists led to rioting and suicides by fire in the streets. Manhattan explains why the reports of what was really happening written by American military and civil advisors failed to reach the United States President. And finally Manhattan explains why the project backfired and as US soldiers continued to die and I made a different little comment of that in the description of this video. I said they not only died, but better they continued to be sacrificed by the Roman Catholic Church. So why the project backfired and the US soldiers continued to die, or better continued to be sacrificed, the Vatican made a secret deal with Ho Chi Minh. 
and then there's a little bit something about the author but you can do your own research on Afro Manhattan uh, you can read the Wikipedia and other articles on him I am not going to introduce the author now that you can do for yourself now if you agree with what I just told you this first half hour of this reading then it is interesting that we go to the book and we have a look at what Afro Manhattan wants to tell us now, as I told you, this book was published by uh, Chick Publications. And uh, Chick Publications has made a publisher's foreword. And in this foreword we read, why another book about Vietnam? <laughs> I could also ask, why another book on the Second World War? Do you know how many books have been written over there, uh, of that war? Well, why another book about Vietnam? The word that caused so much hard feelings, disgust and hatred. Vietnam. Some call it a disgrace. Some a police action. When soldiers came back battered, they were looked upon down. They were, sorry. When soldiers came back battered, they were looked down upon, humiliated. The United States lost face in the sight of the world. Now, why bring up the subject again? Because Vietnam was actually a religious war. Well, that's something that I tried to tell you subtly already in the first 30 minutes. Now, the publishers say it in this foreword, and that's what's written in the description box of this video, and that's what it really is all about. All the wars of the last 400 years have all been religious wars. They have been crusades. Yeah? This is like what I wrote in my little description of the book that you can read uh, beneath this video in the description box of the video. I wrote there, quote, This book will be read and discussed by hour of the truth even though unprepared, measured against the truth that is the Bible. The reading will show that not only the Vietnam War, but every other war of at least the last 400 years was a religious war. In other words, a crusade. The controlled media and every other outlet where one can study history are corrupt. Everything has to be measured on the truth. The Word of God. The authorized version of the 1611 King James Bible. Though Avro Manhattan was among other titles a knight of Malta, his insights and knowledge of the subject he wrote of the subjects he wrote on are very valuable even in today's time. So Let's continue what the publishers say here in the foreword. The United States lost face in the sight of the world. Why bring up the subject again? Because Vietnam was actually a religious war. A religious war triggered by the Vatican, the horror of revelation in chapter 17 and 18. Avro Manhattan world authority on Vatican politics has blown the cover on the real reason our boys suffered and died in Vietnam. He traces their death to the Vatican's passionate desire to make Asia Roman Catholic. Why is it the desire of the Roman Catholic Church to make Asia Roman Catholic? because they want to make the whole world Roman Catholic and that is what you guys who don't understand the scripture call the quote-unquote New World Order. The New World Order is nothing else but the restoration of the supreme power of the Pope as he had before the time of the Reformation in the beginning of the 16th century. The New World Order is not new. It is the restoration of the Old World Order. But in that time the quote-unquote known world was much smaller than it is today. So now the papacy is back with a vengeance. They are going to Catholicize the whole world. And if you do not convert, you die. Edmond Paris wrote an interesting book on the nation-state of uh, the quote-unquote free nation-state of Croatia in the Second World War which he called convert or die. Because that's the policy of the Roman Catholic Church and it has been her policy from the beginning. Convert to Roman Catholicism or die. 
Okay. Avro Manhattan. World authority on Vatican politics has blown the cover on the real reason our boys, the American boys, I'm not an American, but I read it as it's written. Yeah? Our boys, I sympathize with quote unquote our boys, even though I'm not an American, because mainly Protestants were sacrificed. Well, that's something that you can read also in Eric John Phelps' book. Um, what's it called? Uh, Vatican Assassins Wounded in the House of My Friends and uh, when you read that book you will understand what I just said yeah? that uh, many Protestants were specially chosen for example on D-Day uh, to run against the German machine gun wall but I'm not going into that here right now I leave that up for your own research but this is what the uh, publishers say here um, that the Vatican, uh, that the Vatican, uh, that Avro Manhattan blows the cover of the Vatican, and on the real reason, our boys, and with our boys, I'd like to say, very often Christians, real Christians, not Catholics, but real Christians, suffered and died in Vietnam. He traces their death to the Vatican's passionate desire to make Asia Roman Catholic, and as I said, not only Asia but the whole world. Vatican agents hatched and plotted the Vietnam War. American soldiers were serving the, Viet the, the Vatican in their desperate struggle to survive the jungles, the hell of warfare, pain, death and destruction. It was all engineered by the whore of Babylon and her military Jesuitical order. The manipulation of our presidents was a masterpiece. God help us to realize that this organization, condemned by Jesus Christ, will continue her bloody march through history until he, Jesus Christ, comes back again. Christians must know what the Vatican is up to. If the Lord Jesus Christ devoted three chapters in the book of Revelation to this organization, it behooves Christians to be on their toes and to wake as they were at the time of the Reformation. Without wisdom, the people perish. And as far as I can remember from the back of my mind, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. That was already that case in the Old Testament and that is still the case today. Now, before we really go into the book, we are just speaking of the contents. What does this book talk about? The prelim preliminaries. World War II, the provisional partition of Vietnam and the beginning of the Vietnamese conflict. In Chapter 2, we speak about the Vatican, American the Vatican-American Grand Alliance. Reasons which prompted the United States to commit herself to the war in Vietnam. Chapter 3 deals with the Fatimization of the West. Religious and ideological preliminaries to the Vietnamese war. Yeah. Chapter 4. The Pope's blessing for a preventive war. The Secretary of the United States Navy, Secretary Chamberlain of the Pope, prepares for World War III. Chapter 5. The Miraculous Zigzagging Sun. <laughs> pope Pius XII, the Antichrist Pope Pius XII, Hitler's Pope Eugenio Pacelli, uses religious emotionalism in, as, an, as an incitement to war. Pope Pius XII and his vision of the dancing sun. We go into that in Chapter 5. Chapter 6. The Pope's quote-unquote Preventive war miscarries. Oh, it was a preventive war? Hmm. U.S. admirals, generals and diplomats troop to the Vatican. President Truman's despairing comments. Chapter 7. The men behind the Vietnamese war. Politicians, 
generals and prelates and their selection of the quote-unquote savior of Vietnam. Chapter 8 Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary go south. With this I'm quite sure we don't have to understand the Jesus Christ of the Bible and the Virgin Mary of course is a Roman Catholic Queen of Heaven. Huh? The Catholic imponderable in the escalation of the Vietnamese war. So, it's very important that we always have the Bible, the truth, in the back of our minds when we read this book. Otherwise, we'll never ever really understand what it talks about. Chapter 9 The Pious Spellman Dulles Secret Scheme. The U.S. taxpayer finances the creation of a quote, Catholic dictatorship unquote, in South Vietnam. Chapter 10 the promotion of Catholic totalitarianism. Individuals considered dangerous may be confined to a concentration camp. Think about this in Corona times 2020. Nothing new under the sun. Chapter 11. Consolidation of terrorism. Anti-protestant legislation. Detention arrests, tortures and executions. Chapter 12, starting on page 99. A CIA spy plane cancels a summit meeting. The Cardinal Spellman war replaces the preventive war planned by the Dulles brothers and Pope Pius XII. Chapter 13. The Vatican's attempts to prevent peace. <laughs> Not to prevent war and to bring peace. No, 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 you've heard correctly. The Vatican's attempts to prevent peace. Antichrist Pope John XXIII rejects Geneva Agreement while the US Catholic President goes for, quote, unlimited commitment, unquote. Chapter 14. Religious persecutions and suicides by fire. World opinion forces United States to, quote, deplore repressive actions, unquote, of Diem. Chapter 15. End of the Catholic Dictatorship. Assassinations of two Catholic presidents. Chapter 16, from page 131 on, deals with Catholic expansionism in Southeast Asia in the 19th century. Historical background of the U.S. War of Vietnam. Chapter 17, just six pages later, reads Early History of Catholic Power in Siam and China. Characteristic Precedents of Repression. Chapter 18, History of Catholic Aggressiveness in Japan. Conversions, Rebellions, Political Unrest and civil war. I'd like to remind you that political unrest always is preceded by uh, civil war. So first comes political unrest and then comes civil war. What are they stirring up the United States the last months and years? Political unrest, right? The precursor for civil war. Chapter 19 creation of a dangerous alliance. <laughs> United States and alliances, think of the Holy Alliance or the Unholy Alliance of Pope John Paul II with Ronald Reagan to bring down communism. Time cover of 1992 if I'm not mistaken. You can read about that in the book Rulers of Evil by F. Tupper Saucy. Creation of a dangerous alliance. Retrospective assessment of the prelim preliminaries of the U.S.-Vietnamese War. Chapter 20 starts on page 161 where it says the two Catholic presidents and the revolutionary pope. The collapse of the U.S.-Vatican grand strategy in Vietnam. The next chapter 21 deals with secret deal between the pope and the communists of North Vietnam. 
the Vatican prepares for a united Marxist Vietnam. And finally, we come to the close of the book in chapter 22, on page 180, The Final Disaster. Disintegration of the Vietnam-US Partnership in Vietnam. This is for seven pages, then we have some notes, and that is from page 187, and on page 191, the book ends. And then we go into the preface of the book. And I want to go into the preface and read to you what is written on page 13 in this book, Vietnam, Why Did We Go? The political and military origin of the War of Vietnam has been described with millions of written and spoken words. Yet, nothing has been said about one of the most significant forces which contributed to its promotion, namely the role played by religion, which in this case means the part played by the Catholic Church and by her diplomatic counterpart, the Vatican. Their active participation is not mere speculation. It is an historical fact, as concrete as the presence of the United States of America or the massive guerrilla resistance of Asian communism. The activities of the last two have been scrutinized by thousands of books, but the former has never been assessed, not even in a summarized form. The Catholic Church must be considered as a main promoter in the origin, escalation and prosecution of the Vietnamese conflict. From the very beginning, this religious motivation helped set in motion the avalanche that was to cause endless agonies in the Asiatic and American continents. The price paid was immense. Thousands of billions of dollars, which today you call trillions. The mass dislocation of entire populations. Political anarchy military devastation on an unprecedented scale, the disgrace upon the civilized world, the loss of thousands upon thousands of young Asian and American lives. Last but not least, the wounding, mutilation and death of hundreds of thousands of men, women and children. The tragedy of Vietnam will go down in history as one of the most pernicious deeds of the contemporary alliance between politics and organized religion. Factors of a political, ideological, economic and military nature played no mean role in the unfolding of the war, but the religion of the Catholic Church was one of its main instigators. From the beginning, her role has been minimized, when not obliterated altogether. Concrete facts, however, cannot be wiped away so easily, and it is these which we shall now scrutinize, even if briefly. Now, this preface leads us to the preliminaries in chapter 1 starting on page 14 but that will be for a second reading a second video another reading the consecutive reading of this first one I hope I triggered your interest in following me in the reading and discussion of this book by Avro Manhattan I hope and pray that you are staying strong in the Bible and that you will take on the whole armor of God as Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 advise us to do because when you have the whole armor of God you will understand these things and when you understand these things you can teach these things to other people and especially if you're an American you will finally wake up to how you have been manipulated into understanding that the Vietnam War was a good thing for your nation and that you finally wake up to the deception that has been played on your mind that you were used by the Antichrist of this world 
to fight his war overseas. And at what cost? We're going through that with the next readings. I hope you will have understanding for the fact that I do not go on making fancy videos of this reading. I hope that Brother Brett will provide me with interesting intros, one intro in the first place and maybe later on an advanced intro or advanced intros or outros to this video, to this readings, to these readings, let's say it like that. And, um, but uh, I will not uh, go for fancy pictures within, uh, within this book reading. Um, this book itself has pictures in it. I will try to put these up uh, in the videos if appropriate at the moment of the reading but for most of the time you will probably just see the cover of the book or in uh, a, a picture of Hour of the Truth because I do not go into extensive video work in reading this book and that also has the reason because in my opinion and that's why I'm doing this the spoken word should not be diverted by visual attractivities mean let's not make a fancy video that takes your attention away from the spoken or the written or the read word in this case the read and discussed word of this book and um, I hope you will understand that if not well <laughs> you're free to go to any other YouTube channel you, uh, or, or wherever you like this is the way that I handle this and this is the way that I do this I will keep the audios and if someone comes up and says oh but I have a wonderful idea to make an interesting video on what Jörg says here yeah, well uh, go ahead just uh, download the audio from the internet and do your own video of this but don't alter my audio the information provided in this book the information provided in comparison to the Bible when we hold this book and when we hold what is read and understood here against the Bible is much more important than fancy pictures in a video. So even though YouTube is a video platform in this case and even in other cases I think it is more important to use the audio and to listen closely to what is being read and what is being said and to measure all that against the Word of God the authorized version of 1611 of the King James Bible. So I hope you like this video and um, you come back for the next reading. And in the meantime, I want to advise you to read your Bible. Maranatha.